What's up, Viola gang? I'm James, and one year ago at this time, I had just finished my final college audition, which is right here at the Juilliard School of Music. And if you're looking for a short answer, how did I get into Juilliard? Well, I practiced a lot, and I did pretty well at my audition. But if you want to hear the juicy details, and some of the more chaotic moments of my college audition experience, then stick around. For now, an epic Viola King intro. See, the way that music schools work is they have two rounds of auditions. The first one is auditioning for an audition. And this is the pre-screening, which is recorded and sent in with your application. When I recorded for my pre-screening, I forgot to double check the Juilliard requirements, and so I only played one movement of Bach. I had to go back to my church the day before it was closed for Thanksgiving break. I only had one day to learn an entirely different movement of Bach to play for the pre-screening. The other big mistake I made at the beginning was predictably procrastinating on my college applications, so I ended up doing three in a single day. The same day I made four pies for my family's Thanksgiving dinner. Eventually I got them all in. Except there was another big mistake, and that was I forgot to actually submit my application for the Oberlin Conservatory of Music. Three days later, I checked back on the webpage because I hadn't received a confirmation email, and I saw that I actually hadn't submitted it. So I panicked, I uh, sent them an email, and that night, I was so upset that I wrote a whole duet for violin and viola. It was called Magic in the Air, you can find it on my previous channel. But anyways, they got back to me a few days later, and they said, Take a deep breath. All is fine. This happens all the time. A few weeks later, I flew out to New York to have some trial lessons. I visited my brother along the way. It was Christmas time in New York, so I got a really good impression. Everything just seemed so festive and happy, and full of energy. But anyways, my trial lessons were all really great. I learned a lot. I felt an especially strong musical connection with the teacher who I study with now. In fact, if you're auditioning for colleges, I definitely recommend having as many trial lessons as possible. It'll help you figure out which teachers you want to study with, and it'll help those teachers to know you, so when you come into your audition, they know who you are and they remember you. Anyways, another interesting thing from that trip is my dad and I saw Senator Chris Christie eating caviar in the breakfast restaurant at our hotel. So I went home after that, and I practiced a lot over winter break because I was very nervous about my upcoming auditions. That brings me to my very first college audition, which was at the Indiana Bloomington School of Music. It was a cold and drizzly day when I went in for my first college audition. I guess I warmed up decently well, and I went in to play, but then all the judges walked out and said they had to use the bathroom. So I stood there and waited, and I was feeling very nervous. One of the professors stayed and talked to me, which helped calm my nerves. Anyways, I went in there, started playing my Bartok Viola Concerto, and they were passing around notes on yellow pieces of notebook paper, which kind of distracted me, but you know, I just kept playing. But I was just so full of adrenaline from playing my Bartok Viola Concerto, that when I went to play my Bach D minor prelude, it sounded like this. <laughs> Yeah, basically it was the worst shaky bow of my life. You know, I just kept playing, calmed down eventually, and it ended up being okay. So, after that audition, I was just glad that I didn't have a complete memory slip and embarrass myself. A few weeks later, I had my second college audition, which was at the Eastman School of Music. It happened to be on one of the coldest days of the year, and it wouldn't have really made a difference except the only available practice room had no heating. So, it was less like warming up and more like freezing. You know, that's just the way that life is sometimes. Again, I was pretty nervous for that audition, especially because I had to play a lot more repertoire. But I did know one of the teachers from a summer camp already, and he gave me a hug when I walked into the room. So then I played for like 15 minutes. They heard a lot of everything. I did have one memory slip in my Bach, but I just started for a few measures before, and I kept going. See, one thing I learned from college auditions is pretty much everyone screws up at some point. So if you're going to audition for colleges, then keep that in mind. So if you mess up, then just keep playing, and it'll probably be fine. The next day, I auditioned at the Oberlin Conservatory of Music, which was in the same trip. That was probably my most relaxing college audition. That's because I already took lessons from the teacher who I was auditioning for, and I had just auditioned the day before, so I was really in shape. So I played that and went really well, then my teacher gave me a tour of the school afterwards. So that was really nice. So I had nothing but good vibes going into my next college audition, which was at the New England Conservatory of Music. Except there was a bit of a faux pas. You see, I had been so caught up in my other auditions that I had forgotten to request a pianist. 
So I didn't end up getting a pianist that was going to play my audition with me until the day before my audition, which is very stressful. Anyways, that audition went okay, and afterwards, the judges saw that I was a composer for my application. They asked me if I wanted to play one of my compositions for them. I was not prepared to play one, but I did anyways. They said it wasn't part of the audition though, so even though it was really terrible, I guess it just didn't matter. So I had a couple of weeks of a break between that audition and my final audition at Juilliard, but I was pretty burnt out from all my repertoire, so I admittedly didn't really practice much. For my Juilliard audition, I was proactive about requesting a pianist, so that wasn't a problem. The main issue with my Juilliard audition was that it was at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. All my other auditions had been in the morning sometimes, so I didn't have to sit around all day stressing out about it and waiting. My Juilliard one, I spent all morning stress practicing. Basically, I was just feeling super nervous the whole day. When I walked into my Juilliard audition, I already knew a few of the teachers from trial lessons, so that helped calm my nerves. Of course, I was still terrified to play for everyone. But, you know, I played my concerto and that really well. When I played my sonata, I actually started on the wrong note in the middle of the piece, which threw me off. I played a lot of notes out of tune throughout the sonata. But you know, the best thing you can do in a college audition is just keep playing and give it your all. Which is what I did, and I actually did really well on my Bach in that audition. Of course, I had mixed feelings about that audition, but I was just super happy that I could finally go home and relax. So I had a chocolate smoothie in the airport on the way back. So next came the period of waiting where I'd be obsessively checking my email all the time every day. It was even worse because a pandemic happened to hit, so I was stuck inside with nothing to do except to play Minecraft. So one by one my letters trickled in and somehow I ended up getting in everywhere. I was especially surprised about my Juilliard acceptance because I thought that my audition hadn't gone as well. It took a really long time for it to set in that I had actually gotten into Juilliard. In fact, I wouldn't say it really hit home until I was in New York moving into my dorm. Deciding which offer to accept was actually really hard. You see, I'd always thought of Juilliard as being my reach school. I never legitimately considered that I was going to get in. So for a long time, I was really set on going to Oberlin. When I did get into Juilliard, it completely turned everything upside down. I had to consider so many different factors. In the end, I ended up choosing Juilliard because I thought that New York City would be the best place for me to start my career as a musician. Also, I thought I would learn the most from being surrounded by the other top-notch students that go to Juilliard. Many hours of Minecraft playing and a year later, and here I am in New York City, so I guess my college auditions went okay. I might make an entirely different video with advice for people who are applying for music schools. If I could give you one piece of advice now, I would say, when you go into your auditions, you just have to perform. Don't worry about any mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. The most important thing is to look forward to each next note. Really let your voice as a musician shine through. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe for more Viola content. Until next time, Viola Gang, Viola King out.